morning happy sunday um beautiful day in the neighborhood it's supposed to be 40 degrees today so i'm super amped and i actually have an errand to run today so i'm super amped that it's gonna be not super brutally fucking cool like 40 40 degrees not ideal but it's pretty reasonable so i i can work with 40 degrees um this morning i'm smoking sunshine daydream out of my bong my little bong actually um so i kind of fucked up i was going to name this one pinky and i named my ice cream cone bowl mini after my mini golden doodle nah i had it backwards this needs to be named mini and the ice cream cone needs to be named chili willy because you know it's an ice cream cone yeah so yeah i i completely just kind of like spaced on that i got the names wrong it happened it's not often that it happens with me that i have to rename something but yeah i got the names wrong on this one so yeah it is what it is with that said i'm just gonna take a little puff oh yeah sunshine daydream my spirit stream Now, this is very smooth compared to the, I think I, it was Baker's Dozen, my friend's um, significant other, his bong, about the same size, but um, <clears throat> that, the stuff that he had was like, damn, holy shit, <laughs> and I'm not, you know, I'm not um, super savvy with bongs yet, um, so yeah, uh, wow, small but mighty, oh my god, I love Sunshine Daydream. Um, the only way I can really describe it is I just feel like I am at a, like, a really chill get-together. It's, it's not too crazy, but it's not too sedate. It's just right, and you're just, like, surrounded by your favorite people, and it's just a really, really chill, like, it gives good ambiance. That's what it does. Maybe that's just the way to describe it, but that sounds really fucking pretentious. No, you know what? I'm gonna write a leafly review and I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna I'm gonna write a wine label leafly review. It's gonna be awesome. Awesome. I can't wait. I'm gonna take another hit. This is really good. <laughs> And my friend's um, SO also taught me um, a little technique to just um, tip the the bong back a little bit so I don't have to like set it on a table like I could. And that, I was like, oh shit, I didn't know you could do that. I've been like, like having to like get all weird and contortionist when I have it by my bed or whatevs. Um, and he's like, yeah, you can do that. And I was like, okay, cool. That's really cool. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to learn a new like trick <sighs> wow <clears throat> but he is right this is a very smooth strain even though i it it's kind of hard for me because i'm not real accustomed to this um yeah it's a really smooth strain um if that other one was any indicator um yeah, it's, I should probably, okay, I'm probably not going to hit it for a hot minute. Um, oh, wow, that's not like a, a fucking rhyme. Um, ooh, who the hell are you? Wow, too long. So, I kind of went through some videos that I wanted to watch. Um, the first one I want to bring up is Fort Hood's, um press release from uh, a private Anna uh, Zaldua Ruiz's death, confirming it. So I'll sh just put it up here. So it, it's press release, Fort Hood. This is probably, um, probably if not a PA person for the army at large, then the PA officer or somebody of of um, standing at Fort Hood, somebody in a senior ranking military official position at Fort Hood, um, 
All right, I'm going to press play. I've never heard this before. And uh, thank you all for attending this press conference. My name is Sean Bernabe, and I'm the commander of the 3rd Armor Corps, and I'm also the senior commander for Fort Hood. On Monday, the... Yeah, very senior-ranking military official, and Fort Hood is one of the, the largest army installations in the world. Um, it's got a very important message, or mission, I think... Um, but the first cavalry is there, I believe, um, and they've, they've got other battalions too. But Fort Hood is massive. Thirteenth of March, we lost a teammate. Private Anna Mazwalda Ruiz passed away here on Fort Hood. Anna was a combat engineer assigned to the Bravo Company of the Ninety First Brigade Engineer Battalion of the First Cavalry Division. Anna had been with our Army team since August of 2021. We're saddened by her death, and we extend our deepest condolences to her family. With Anna's passing, we lost a teammate and a friend. Her fellow troopers in the 1st Cavalry Division mourn her loss. Fort Hood mourns her loss. This entire community mourns her loss. Now, what's important about this press release is shortly after it broke in the mainstream media, her family came forward to discuss the sexual harassment allegations. Now, I reached out to a couple of sources um, in the Fort Hood area, and they allege that this had, again, to do with sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. Not sexual harassment. It might have been communicated that way to her parents. It might have been lost in translation but it was sex trafficking. Maybe she didn't tell them the full extent, or maybe she didn't know the full extent at that time, um, but it was sex trafficking. So this guy, this very high-ranking army official is full of shit. We've reached out to Anna's family to extend our condolences and to assist them in any way we can. Immediately after Anna's death, did you assist them with the sexual harassment allegations? Or did you just gaslight them and say that didn't happen? That doesn't happen on Fort Hood. We care about our soldiers. That would never happen on Fort Hood. We're doing everything we can to prevent it. No, you're not. The leaders from her battalion reached out to Anna's father and to her mother to offer condolences and to provide assistance. Empty and cheap condolences. In fact, they called them at least five times over the past four days. As we speak, a team. Don't you think it's fucked up that they have to give a fucking statement about how many times they called her family? That's cold. You didn't need to say that. You could have just said you reached out. <clears throat> no, but they kept calling the family. You know what that smacks of to me? Fucking intimidation. That's what that smacks of to me. That's disgusting. From Fort Hood is on the ground in California with Anna's father. Anna's battalion commander just completed an initial meeting with Mr. Baswaldo to provide information, any information we can provide at this point, and again to offer assistance. Now we want to be very careful. Did you offer any assistance regarding the sex tra trafficking allegations that also got um, specialist Vanessa Guillen assassinated? Or did you forgo that assistance too, the way that you guys forego forwent it with um, Vanessa Guillen? All about protecting the privacy on his family as they grieve her loss. So we won't share detail. But we are here to tell you that we, the champions, the champions of this sad, sad, unpreventable bullshit. Profoundly preventable. This unpreventable tragedy are here to let the public know that we called them five times. We sent a senior ranking army official to spend time with Anna's family. <clears throat> from the meeting, but I will tell you this. We remain committed to maintaining open lines of communication with Anna's family. As we go forward, we anticipate they'll visit Fort Hood. Open lines of con 
communication for harassment and gaslighting, sure, yeah. In the near future, and we are prepared to receive them and to support them throughout their visit. As with the death of any soldier, regardless of the That's, circumstances, we are investigating. We are prepared to receive them and support them. Could you sound any more combat-like? How about if you're addressing this family, we welcome them greatly with open arms to Fort Hood. We are prepared to receive them. What does that mean? Like you guys did all your back sanitizing and you know, if any of the family members step out of line, i.e. get too inquisitive and not they start seeing through your bullshit, is that how you're prepared to receive them and support them? You piece of shit. Let me emphasize that the Criminal Investigation Division is the lead agency for this investigation. The Criminal Investigation Division, or CID, is an independent agency that reports directly to the Secretary of the Army. Okay, here's where I'm going to call bullshit on that. Well, if the independent investigating agency investigating the incident by superior ranking army officers report directly to the secretary of the army it's not an independent investigating body it's a self-policing body that's the problem that's why they've been getting away with murder literally at fort hood for decades yeah that's insane that's absolutely insane the self-policing this independent investigative or investigating party that answers directly to the secretary of the army or the secretary of defense whichever secretary they named doesn't matter it's still self-policing it's not independent just because you say it's independent it has to actually be independent of that corpus to be independent and it's not it's still embedded in that corpus therefore not independent you fucking clown support of the CID investigation. <laughs> now, a few hours ago, CID provided us a statement to update us all on the investigation. Let me highlight one key aspect. Bullshit biscuits. At this point in the investigation, there are no indications of foul play. CID is not ruling anything out. No indications of foul play. I have an indicator. How about a very public history of foul play over the decades at Fort Hood. That would be grounds enough to conclude an exhaustive investigation before concluding no foul play. Absolutely. Absolutely. fucking lutely Guess who did, you wanna, wanna take any guesses who did the autopsy? Department of the Army. Yep. Uh-huh. Mortuary Affairs, Department of the Army. If you don't think Fort Hood has a Mortuary Affairs, you're sorely mistaken. Many installations don't have them these days. Some of them. Uh, some of them still do. Some of them don't. Um, but you bet your ass Fort Hood has a Mortuary Affairs. Yeah, they did the autopsy. They're the ones who concluded there was no foul play. You think... You think if they found something in the talk screen that they're going to report it? No, because they, they are a self-policing, self-governing agency. The Department of the Army performed the autopsy on this private whose family is now saying she reported sexual harassment. Endemic. It, not just one isolated incident. Endemic. And to me, as an insider, as a former military member, that means there's a culture of that going on. Yes. And if there's a culture of that, it's because the command allows it to go on. Mm -hmm. um, so bullshit that they didn't take their time thoroughly. Like, I don't care. With the history that Fort Hood has, I don't care if they walked in and 
and it was completely evident it was natural causes no you guys are to cross every t and dot every i to rule out any possibility of foul play they did not do that they quickly went to no foul play after the army conducted guess what an autopsy yeah and, and guess what Guess, guess who's going to um, get to investigate the autopsy report to ensure to the Americans who are paying for all of this and watching our young get sacrificed literally, yeah, guess who's going to get to inspect that um, independently of the Army? The Inspector General, who is not independent whatsoever of the Army. Um, yeah, and guess what they're going to say? because they're the ones inspecting themselves. Oh, we conducted a fair autopsy. We did everything. Everything came up clean. We didn't we didn't notice any kind of abrasions or anything that would indicate assault. We didn't notice any. No, no, no. She was fine. No. This guy doesn't even know who she is. Like I'm impressed that he even remembered her last name cuz a couple times I was like, "Ooh, is he going to have to look down at that paper?" Yeah, this is this is a three-star active duty general, the senior commander at Fort, Fort Hood. So basically the Wing King, if I'm assuming correctly, unless the senior commander is Fort Hood's or Army's version of you've got the Wing King and the Vice Wing King. I don't know. Um, it very, very important Army official. Uh, Fort Hood, as I mentioned before, is a massive motherfucking installation with a very, very diverse mission. Oh my god, yeah. Um, I could look it up, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna I'm gonna press play on the bullshit biscuits that are about to come out of this motherfucker's easy bake mouth. And we'll investigate the circumstances leading up to Anna's death fully and completely. Our Fort Hood spokesperson will provide you the CID statement immediately following this press conference. Fair and impartial, I'm sure. Now, we're aware of allegations that Anna was harassed prior to her death. CID is currently investigating these allegations. Allegations or reports? Because her family said that she reported harassment. And allegations are different than reports in the military. And he knows that. He knows that distinction. Alleging it and reporting it in the military are two very different things. I don't expect some somebody of Anna's or Vanessa's experience to be able to make that distinction. No, 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 no. But him, and certainly me, having been career, absolutely. So he's watering it the fuck down. He, they're basically saying, just like they said with Vanessa Guillen, she didn't report anything. Yes, she fucking did. That's why she was assassinated. If she hadn't reported anything, if she hadn't wanted to get that in writing, and hadn't threatened to take it above her chain of command at Fort Hood, she would still be alive. She did report. But when you have a self-policing agency like DOD, you can make... You can make paper materialize with a quickness, and you can make paper paper disappear with a quickness. They, they, they the DOD is their own means and production of the law. These allegations thoroughly. Let me be clear: we do not tolerate harassment of any type. Can you specify tolerate? Because you guys sure have had a hell of a lot of young kids come up missing, suicided, and deceased. So please define tolerate. Because what I've seen, what I've witnessed, um, that doesn't look, doesn't look like you're tolerating, tolerating anything other than um, a very, very corrupt chain of command. And guess who his commander-in-chief is, folks not watching this from home? President Biden. Why, why has President Biden, with the severity, with the legacy and infamy attached to Fort Hood, 
even in recent years, very recent years. Vanessa Guillen was only made 2020. Then there was Elder, I think his last name was Gomez, but I can't remember. Elder Gomez, another private or specialist, um, about two months later in 2020, died mysteriously. So please, please define tolerate. That's a hell of a lot of kids coming up fucking missing. Yeah, they, these people have done nothing other than facilitate and continue going. This was, he was part of the cleanup crew that they sent in after Vanessa Guillen. Because remember, I, people not watching this from home, um, Fort Hood, chain of command, the, the um, senior ranking officers were all relieved of command. Um, of command for Fort Hood, they were probably grandfathered in very discreetly into another organization to lead there, lead and destroy. So this guy is part of the fucking cleanup crew. And they still had deaths after Vanessa Guillen. They had at least one death after Vanessa Guillen. And they didn't go back. They didn't go retroactively and start investigating all the other mysterious deaths and suicides and missing persons cases over the years. No, they didn't do that either. No, no. They have done nothing except ensure that this, this madness, this sickness, this um, sex trafficking cottage industry that Fort Hood has been um, maintaining for decades... Yeah, they're they're letting it go. They want it to go on. They benefit from it. They you you don't get you don't get you don't get promoted to that office in a corrupt system without adding to that corruption first. Harassment of any type is contrary to the army values. No, it's not. Harassment destroys the cohesion. It's central to the army's mission kill people so if you if if people can become hardened and desensitized to killing iraqis such that they start massacring um innocent iraqi families um funny that man didn't want to talk about um iraq uh, let's just focus on afghanistan um and not the opium fields no 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 no. let's just talk about all the spec ops guys who are just awesome really good guys nah when you're desensitized to killing people it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who that person is at the end of your rifle. It does not matter. Yeah, Braun from Game of Thrones, uh, he's an archetypal character for a fucking reason. And um, I'll tell you what, pretty spot on in terms of nailing the, the elite military force spec ops mentality. Braun. So for civilians not watching this at home, if you want to know what um, being around a spec ops is like, Braun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really good guys. Not, you know, there, there are some good ones out there. But a lot of them are just hardened killers. Hardened fucking killers. Um, doesn't, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. If you're American or Chinese or German, they're hardened killers of our teams and it erodes our readiness harassment is unacceptable we do not the army doesn't have to maintain readiness sure they maintain metrics because what happened over the years congress kept giving the money that they were demanding and then congress said well you keep coming back and asking for more money so we're gonna have to have you measure stuff to see where this money is going and so instead of coming back and telling us enlisted peons, and this happens in all the branches, oh yeah, um, we fucked up and we are overdrawn by $15 billion this year and Congress is making us balance our checkbook registers moving forward um, and you know tracking where we spend money. Um, yeah, we, had, we became the masters of spreadsheets and death by PowerPoint. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we have a bunch of senior ranking military officials who accept money from Congress, dump it into TSSCI protected programs that don't get audited ever, um, and yeah.
and that uh, us enlisted peons get fucked again and again and again and again and then we get fucked even more it, as if like 69 days from Sunday wasn't enough we get fucked even more because then they have to create additional duties to keep up with this shit we get like super fucked yeah I'm not fucking salty so they don't have to have a readiness posture especially the army like if, if airmen are replaceable in, in today's um, zero mistake air force um, I would say it's been like that for the past 17, 18 years. Um, the army are fucking replaceable AF. AF. I mean, they they have army recruiters who will do a cough, cough, wink, wink, and slide convicted felons in the door. Because the army doesn't care if they're going down range as a three, wait, that 311's Marines, um, as infantry, they don't care. It's just a fucking another poor enlisted peon to hide behind. They don't give a fuck. Tolerate harassment. If anyone has information about previous or ongoing harassment of any type involving Anna or any soldier. Don't you breathe a word of it to the media. And don't you dare report it up the chain of command. Or we will take immediate action to harm you and possibly your family. I'd ask them to come forward information we want to know about it i want to know about bullshit bullshit in in the era of well anna didn't report it vanessa didn't report it bullshit with this come forward bullshit with this information no you give them instructions on how to fucking report it motherfucker you clearly cannot handle fort hood your track record speaks for its for itself. You don't need to op even open your mouth, three-star nobody. Your track record says everything I need to know. D enlisted personnel at Fort Hood not watching this from home, do not come forward to that motherfucker. These people will harm you. Seek out your elected officials. Look at the, um, the committees in the House, in the Senate, that are relevant to your concern and reach out to them. Reach out to media, uh, specifically citizen or independent journalists. Do not go to these motherfuckers with information. Unless you want to end up missing or dead or suicided. And if you think that's a conspiracy theory, people not watching this from home, look at Fort Hood's fucking track record. It's absolutely disturbing. Do not go to these fucking clowns with information. They are in on it. There's a reason why President Biden has not censured them publicly yet. Where the fuck is your mouth, President Biden? When I checked your goddamn feed yesterday on Twitter, you didn't even mention this private's name. Fort Hood didn't even escape your goddamn fingertips, you fucking pedo. Um, open your goddamn mouth, President Biden, and censure Fort Hood immediately and have them relieved of command, all of them, immediately. Open your fucking mouth. Enough about the climate. Enough about the fucked up budget that you threw at Congress. Enough about the jobs that you say you created, but saying it doesn't make it fucking true, motherfucker. Open your fucking mouth about Fort Hood. You can't, because you're in on it. That's why. That shit's coming to light. You are going to be impeached, Biden. You are going to be impeached. I rue the day that I, I voted for your fucking treason clown ass. Now we've got Vanessa Guillen, who didn't get a fair investigation after her murder. Yeah, because you guys didn't bring the other, the other accomplices to light, did you? Especially the more prominent ones. On the installation did you nah you sure didn't you piece of shit you scummy piece of shit Anna's death was preventable Anna's assassination Anna's assassination was preventable you guys let the fucking cartel in you maintain a permeable permeal border for these these types of purposes you need you need a clandestine, undocumented supply of fucking killers. 
You're fucking scum. I can't wait for you to go to prison, you piece of shit. In the meantime, do your fucking job. Press release for Anna. And do Corinne Jean-Pierre fucking favor. Tell her to at least, at least figure out how to get Anna's name, like, reasonably or approximately enunciated. Fucking, I, I cannot, I cannot. I, it just, this is so infuriating to me that our president has not publicly censured Fort Hood. It's infuriating to me that United Nations, who's always pointing the finger at America, you guys need to come help us. You guys got to come bail us out of this war, that war. Where the fuck is United Nations when our fucking American kids are coming up missing on goddamn military installations? Or they don't count. Is that it? Poor enlisted bodies in America just don't fucking count to the United Nations. And the greater majority of poor enlisted bodies, believe it or not, the greater majority are white, poor, enlisted bodies. And we don't fucking count. And that goes for, that goes for my sisters and brothers in arms who are not white. They don't count either in your eyes. That's disgusting. That is disgusting. When, when is the enlisted force structure in America going to count? Why does the enlisted force structure in Afghanistan count more than we do? Why does the enlisted force structure in Russia count more than we do? When are we going to fucking count? No, nah, instead I go on Reddit and I see fucking rhetoric like, it's not that bad being enlisted. People have this idea that life is so easy in the civilian sector and they're just going to hand you the six-figure job and it's just, and you guys complain about being in the military. I heard that shit back in 2007 and I thought it was fucking full of just absolute inflated artificial intelligence back then and I wasn't, I wasn't what I would consider a profoundly critical thinker back in 2007. Um... Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my God. When, when are poor enlisted fucking peons in America going to count as much as poor enlisted peons in Afghanistan, as much as poor enlisted peons in Russia? I remember a couple, a couple months ago, the headlines, major publications, publications that had no right to talk, Washington Post, who shut down my fucking allegations. Um, yeah. Yeah. Talking about, um, hold up a second. And even, even right after um, the conflict broke out in the Crimea, when Ukraine invaded the Crimea, um, the headlines were all about, oh, these poor enlisted Russian soldiers. Oh, they're, they're fighting on the, the Putin's so bad to them. He mistreats them so badly. They have a really bad quality life. Do you guys know how fucking tone deaf that sounds? Yeah, because those publications are the same publications who seem to think that the enlisted force structure in the United States Armed Forces does not exist, despite us making up probably about 85% of the entire population of the armed forces. Yeah, we don't exist to these people. Um, nor do we exist to the UN. Um, the WHO is not interested in us. If they were, they would have, um, they would have come after the mental health crisis in the armed forces. They have not. In fact, we have General Scott, or Mann, sorry, General, or Lieutenant Colonel Mann, um, sitting there and it's, it's insane to me. I, 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 it's like nobody fucking knows that we exist. So please come forward the information. Find a leader here at Fort Hood. Or there are no leaders at Fort Hood. Again, reach out to your elected officials and any relevant committees on the House or the Senate especially the Armed Services Committee um, and oversight and weaponization of the federal government. Do not entrust your fucking life to these motherfuckers. They do not care about you. Up to CID. Again, thank you for attending today's press conference. At this time, I'd be happy to take a couple of questions. I'm sorry, can you say that again? Any records about the uh, Fernanda uh, arrest? 
arrest? Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. Very important question. Do you have any records about the harassment? Why do you think that journalist is asking that? Because they asked the same thing about Vanessa Guillen, and guess what they were told? She never reported it. What I'll tell you is I want to be very mindful of the privacy of the family. And so... What he's really saying is he needs to be very mindful about deflecting and distracting from any liability. Hint, all, 100%, unanimous, that the Army should, um, should assume. Yeah, that's what he has to be mindful about. He got, he got back-briefed and pre-briefed and post-briefed by public affairs and legal so he has to be very very careful because he doesn't want to incriminate the army because yeah i will not share oh, any information uh regarding uh conduct good or bad uh in the interest of the privacy of the family what i will tell you is that we are aware of some stressors in Anna's life not tied to harassment but stressors in her life, and I know CID... It's never tied to harassment. The stressors are never tied to harassment. The stressors are never tied to leadership issues. No, no, it's, all, it's always the person. Oh, no, no, no. You know, Anna just couldn't... She just couldn't get there. She just couldn't make it happen. She just wasn't a good fit. Yeah, it's never about them and what they're doing. We'll investigate those stressors fully as they try to understand the context, the circumstances, and perhaps the causes of her of her death. Thank you for the question. Her parents seem pretty well aware of what the causes of her death were likely pertaining to. So what I will say is that uh, remind us all that CID is the lead. Okay. That's the first time I've heard that allegation. Okay. I'm definitely going to start researching this a lot more. Um, first and foremost, if it was a suicide, they've already had many suicides that were suspicious. Um, uh, Elder comes to mind. Um, uh, they should have done an extremely thorough, exhaustive, comprehensive investigation from an outside. FBI should have fucking come in. The FBI should have been contacted. Fort Hood is a murder factory. Fort Hood is a murder factory. Investigating it, you should see they will look at the circumstances and they will determine the circumstances and the cause and contributing factors of her death. And they will determine in favor of the army because guess what? They answer to the secretary of the army and the secretary of defense. Yeah, they're not, an, they're not an independent agency. Say again, saying that something is an independent agency doesn't make it an independent agency. It's like saying something X, Y, Z doesn't make it true. You can say all you want, but that doesn't make like as soon as soon as he said independent agency and said they answered directly to either the secretary of the army or the, well ultimately they would answer to the secretary of defense, but um, he basically invalidated the whole independent investigating agency part. It's no, it's not independent. It's completely embedded. It answers to the same head that allows these fucking problems to to persist. CID is careful not to assume anything or rule anything out, and I defer the, that question to CID as they conduct their investigation, but thank you, Adam. Oh, my God. Spineless. absolutely fucking lutely spineless. Um, at this point, Fort Hood should not be allowed to investigate itself. The Army should not be allowed to investigate itself. That's the problem. The Army has been investigating itself on all these murders, suicides, missing persons. That's the problem. Yeah. So now that we know what the common denominator is, the Army is investigating itself. Not necessarily the murders, because there are other behaviors that are aberrant that go on at Fort Hood that don't necessarily culminate in murder, but they're equally disturbing, um, such as child sex trafficking. Yeah, um... 
It's, yeah, Jesus Christ. I can't with these people. They're fucking monsters. Here, let's see, let's see what Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene has to say. It needs to be the party that goes all the way and stops the radical left. So she's talking about um, we have to recognize who the Democrats are, which I, I agree because a lot of a lot of people, especially in um, the Republican Republican leaning um, mainstream media and major publications, um, they're hyper focused on the party line still, and there are many many dinos and many rhinos in Congress. It's called the No Name Party. It actually that is a thing. That is the No Name Party. Yeah, they don't have a party. Their, their affiliation, their loyalties to themselves, the no-name party. ...agenda that they will push for in every single way. We have to stop them. And the Republican Party needs to recognize, and this is what I say all the time to my colleagues in Congress, is it's not enough. It's not enough to just focus on policy. We would love to do that. Do you know how nice it would be to show up at work and just focus on policy? And then we all are nice to each other, and then we go have dinner, and we go home for the day. That's not where we are in America anymore. We have to recognize who the Democrats are. The Democrats are now the party of the globalist elites. The Democrats... Well, I guess I had that one wrong. I, I guess you can't... I, I just took it to mean something different, but you know what? I still like where this is going. ...are the party that will bail out Silicon Valley Bank... But yet, turn around and totally and completely ignore East Palestine. Yes. Think about that. That is absolutely despicable. The, the almost immediate outcry of Democrats um, in media especially, you know, um, and, and elected officials, it's disturbing. It's so fucking disturbing. It's like they don't even care. Like they're in full blown purge mode. They don't even care that people recognize how disturbing and just warped their priorities are. They will bail out Silicon Valley Bank because those are their donors. Yeah. Those are their friends and those people support them. But the people in East Palestine those are, right, those are just like regular Americans all over the country. And the Clintons will kill them if they don't support them and bail them out. So there. Those people are just like the people in my district. Those people represent who America really is. And no one is helping them. No one's been. She's right. I absolutely feel heard by her statement. I, I might have I inferred... Um, a different trajectory when I read the byline, but I, I love it. I feel so heard. I, f yeah, absolutely. Bring them out. No one's buying their property. Exactly. It's like, it, it's kind of analogous to the enlisted force structure. It's like peons who make up the majority of um, uh, the population in America are it's like we're nameless, faceless. We don't exist. Yeah, I wow. I feel very heard by that. It's pretty fucking dope. Um, let's see what else is going on. Ooh, ooh, lawmaker. Okay, so let's see what this GOP lawmaker questions FBI Director Christopher Ray about political bias in the intelligence community. Um, this was from three hours ago, but I'm guessing the actual hearing was probably from a couple business days ago. Um, Unlike 9-11, where we had universal 100% support, um, we had incredible bipartisanship here in Congress, incredible universal support for the intelligence agencies. When um, things happen, um, and by the way, in the case of... of um, and just full disclosure here, I'm interested in the U.S. intelligence community because I... People not watching this from home, I've probably said it a million, million times, I was a combat drone troop, so we're heavily integrated. I, I think the best way I had it, I've heard it put, to give credit to him, even though he is a fucking chode, um, general writer, um, he said that we're, like, it's the ISR platform, it's just, yeah, intelligence, surveillance, surveillance and reconnaissance, and... The MQ-9 Reaper adds the combat part, so it's like ISRC, really. 
uh, Director Haynes, Director Burns, uh, Director Ray, uh, due to the actions of your predecessors, not yourselves, you've been forced to deal with their actions. Um, when there's a chipping away of that uh, trust, um, there's it, it, when we're so this is a hearing. He's Ray is being questioned. And the guy already said, I guess the guy has already concluded in his head, whoever this, I can't see the, the name tape below his bust, um, that these affairs happened before Ray was ever even appointed. So I guess in his mind, I'm guessing Ray isn't guilty? I don't know. I don't, maybe I'm reading too much into it. Depending with juries and, and conducting jury questioning, there's a way to remove jurors for bias. Um, amongst other things. The background check system, the polygraphs can screen for drug use, uh, foreign contacts and the like, but there's really no way that I'm aware of, and I don't know if there's a policy solution that we can check for bias. Because I think the biggest threat to these agencies is when there's a public perception that there's a political bias on the left or the right. Um, it could be both. It used to be easy to do that when we lived in different times, but our country is very, um, you know, hyper-partisanship is at a spike right now, and that invariably bleeds into the hiring process and makes it tough for um, uh, the agencies to screen mm -hmm. for that. So how do you deal with that, right? I mean, when I was in the Bureau, we rarely, if ever, heard any talk about politics. We really didn't, and I took that as a source of pride for the Bureau. Uh, but this was before we've seen the spike in hyper-partisanship. Um, how, how do your agencies combat that? Because it really is a risk because it bleeds into the public not having faith, in some cases justified, in some cases not, um, of the actions of the various agencies? Well, I, there, obviously it's a complicated topic. Uh, one thing I will point to that we've done, uh, because I think you're right to focus not just on actual problems, which have occurred, uh, but, but appearances, issues, perceptions, those things matter. And so one of the things that we did uh, is I ordered a stand down uh, to focus on uh, not just Look, this guy is giving him side sure eye right behind him. Avoided even the appearance of bias. And He's so like, I started in a way that you will, from your shit. past experience, recognize is very unusual at the FBI. Instead of saddling the front lines with some new training requirement. I already forgot what the fucking question was because he couldn't just fucking answer it. They never can. Because of something somebody else somewhere did. I started at the top, so I took all 250 or whatever it is of the SESers all the way from Legat in Australia all the way to California and made them all come to Quantico for a single day where the overwhelming message was back to fundamentals, the right thing in the right way, what they heard from judges, because a lot of what you're describing about is sort of trying to adopt more of the kind of mindset the judges... See, when he describes that event of coming together to, I guess become more i guess aware of their political biases biases um it also sounds like an official get together to foot stomp wink wink nod nod they may have political backgrounds but they put those to the side they check them at the door when they take on the rope we need to have that same kind of mentality so the point was to start at the top. But to be fair, Congress, you guys need to start holding your own people accountable. Yeah, I don't care if the staff, staff judge advocate for the National Guard Bureau said it's okay for Mike Waltz to run for elected office in um, a Florida district for Congress. I don't care. It's inappropriate and it's unfucking constitutional. And then it's equally unconstitutional that Mike Waltz answers directly to his commander in chief of the Florida National Guard in a military capacity, which in the military overrides all other capacities at all times, always, and in all ways. Um, yeah, you guys need to start cleaning house in Congress too. Like, I'm excited you guys are getting work done. But don't sit there and act like there aren't any problematic people in the, um, in the Republican Party. Americans are, we're not enchanted with either party right now. So don't, don't misconstrue our disenchantment with Biden as just 
disenchantment of the entire Democratic Party or Democrat Party, whatever they fucking call themselves. Who's the, who is the fuck, oh, Raskin, oh my God, what a fucking doofus, oh my God. Um, yeah. With everybody at the top of the organization, make them take the medicine first and then push it out to the workforce and we did it for the entire workforce. So what was the medicine exactly? What what modes did you use to roll out this education of biases of sorts? Yeah, lessons, benchmarks, objectives. He just rolled out a bunch of like fancy lingo. Fancy, fluffy. I mean, I have to give it to the guy. He's great at BSing. He's a good BSer. Like, I, I wish I could BS. I can't BS. If I don't know what I'm talking about, you're just going to get a blank stare. And I'm just going to be like, uh, either that or I've forgotten. But, yeah, if I don't know what I'm talking about, I, I can't be BS my way out of it. I cannot. He's a good BSer. I just add to that. Just to say that um, I think this is a critical issue. And I think, Congressman, you know, as you think about this, if you have ideas for us, Please let us know. I, I see this as, first of all, from a leadership perspective, setting the tone for a culture that makes clear, to, just as you described your prior experience in government, that politics have no place in the workspace and in national security. That this is something that, you know, I, I also as, grew up as a civil servant in the government and nobody asked me what party I belong to. That was never an issue. And that's something that just has no place in our work. And, uh, and I think we are looking, you know, as Director Ray's comments make clear, like across the intelligence community, all of us, I think feel very strongly about- I mean, to be, to be fair, she's kind of not wrong because at that level, they don't care about the party. They just care about the perks. Yeah, they don't, they don't care who's handing out the perks. They just care about the perks. So to be fair, she's not wrong. Setting that tone for culture and- It just so sure happens that, that, not... that the Bidens and the Clintons carry out a lot of, or provide a lot of perks. Issue. I think the second piece for, for the IC more generally is in fact engaging in greater transparency where we can. And I think exposing our assessments, doing an annual threat assessment world hearing in an open forum, as you've asked us to come back and do, trying to put out more of our products, trying to give an opportunity for the American people to see the work that we do, sort of, you know, to give a little bit more insight into how it is that we do things um, can help. And then finally, in the context of transparency, giving more of a sense of the rules within which we operate and do not. And that's something that we're continuing to try to push out frameworks and ways of working and compliance things to expose. I, I feel she was a bit more informative than Ray. Um, still, I'm kind of, I don't know, I would like to have seen more of this question and answer. The byline is doesn't even really apply to it. And I, I don't know who the representative was that asked the question, but it just, when he came out the gate with, you know, we know you guys aren't responsible for, responsible for these problems. They were left by the previous um, administration. Are you fucking kidding me? Then what's the point of questioning them now? If you're, you've just said they're not responsible for the problems because the problems are created by the previous administration. No. No, they've had plenty of time. They've had plenty of time to clean up shop and they've done nothing and things have gotten dramatically worse, far worse. And in fact, um, Ray was a Trojan horse. Yeah, Ray was paraded around um, by a few people to President Trump nonstop, exhaustively. Ray was a Trojan horse. Ray didn't give a shit about politics. He just gives us a shit about, like Ron DeSantis, perquisites. When we make mistakes and when we don't, and why it is that we're, what we're doing about it. Okay. Director, we're gonna have to move on if you don't mind holding your comments. Mm -hmm. Mr. Crenshaw. That was kind of, I don't know, didn't do much for me. Let's see what else. Um, President, ooh! Marie Jean Pierre, this is gut filled. I've I've only seen like a few minutes here and there of gut filled episodes. Good gut filled. I I'm not really accustomed to his style, so I kind of yeah. So I'm kind of like oh, lost in the sauce. Meanwhile, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean Pierre 
Recognizing yeah. the nation's obesity problem, so she served up another word salad. Hit it, girl. It's because of her fat head. She has a fat fucking head. Full of fucking hot air. Oh my god. We're gonna move forward with a with a uh, with this kind of system, this immigration system that has been gutted, really, truly gutted by the last administration. We're gonna move forward and do it in a humane way. We're gonna do it in a safe way, uh, and we're gonna do it in the way that moves us forward. And so what we have been seeing, what we've been dealing with, again, is trying to fix the damage that the last administration do did. Do did. There's an actual do video did. of the brain cells leaving her head during that <laughs> <sighs> Folks, Karine Jean-Pierre is so dumb, she almost froze to death at a drive-in movie. <laughs> she had gone to see Closed for the Winter. Oh my god. I, she is fucking ridiculous, ridiculously ignorant, incompetent, and racist. Like, I... Sorry, not sorry times sorry not sorry squared yeah she's a racist if you don't agree boohoo administration was almost exactly two years ago after border numbers started to soar in the wake of the president taking office and i have to say unfortunately little has changed since my last visit thanks to the fact that president biden spent the first two years of his presidency refusing to even acknowledge this crisis much less actually address it we are still facing a disastrous situation at our southern border yes i talked to border patrol agents who spent two years dealing with record-breaking numbers of illegal immigrants and are still looking for support from the biden administration it never seems to come again and again border patrol agents told me that not only do they not feel supported by the biden administration they feel like the biden administration has actually impeded their ability to do their jobs just let us enforce the law, one agent told me, something that was echoed by other law enforcement officers that we spoke to. And to give you just one example, we heard from the individual in charge of the border for the state of Texas, who told us that they have a number of panels for the congressionally mandated border wall that are ready to go into the ground. The state of Texas and law enforcement personnel would like to install. I'm probably going to come to this one to later on. It's not. It's interesting, but. It looks like I'm going to have to, like, oh, okay. Now, I do want to go back to Fort Hood. This is, I know his first name is Elder. I think his last name was Gomez, but he was either a private or a specialist. And he went missing shortly after um, they found um, Specialist Guillen's remains. And um, the word on the street is that he he spoke up about what happened to her. So I don't. I'm wake still up a digging around there. series of tragic so. incidents, including the murder of Army Specialist it's from two Vanessa years ago. of Houston, and tonight, the family of another soldier says they did not buy the Army story about what happened to their loved one. Grace White explains. Nacho. So, compare this to the Army's presentation, Fort Hood's um, press release, um, press conference uh, a few days ago. Yeah, so if she did, in fact, Anna um, appeared to have committed suicide, don't you think it would warrant a very thorough, exhaustive investigation from an outside source or agency like the FBI? Oh, yes, I think so. Then he was a go-getter. He's, he's, he's aggressive. He's, he's so highly decorated. 23-year-old Sergeant Elder Fernandez was born Fernandez, in I'm sorry. off the west coast of Africa and from a military family. I didn't know he that. He recently re-enlisted for until 2024 because he loves the army. So I will say this. I didn't know he was from a military family. Um, he was probably from an enlisted military family. And, you know, I, I grew up under the impression that I was from... That my stepfather was just enlisted scum. Um, but yeah, we, we tend to be very cooperative. If we see somebody getting hurt or harmed, we tend to be more assertive in speaking up. We tend to have the better leadership principles, um, the better work ethics. I'm, I'm not saying it because 
I come from that. I, you know, there's certainly areas that I'm not necessarily like checking off all the boxes that I just rattled off. But that's the tendency um, for, you know, enlisted dependents. Um, we tend to have those traits. Um, just very Good Samaritan-like, very speak up when you say something. You don't necessarily think about your, your safety first. You might think about the safety of others first. Um, yeah. Because um, we're learning it from enlisted people. Yeah. Yeah, the enlisted peons who go home at night are our parents. Although, not so much for me. Please remember that all speakers must sign... Sorry about that. His cousin, Mariana Shorter, who spent 24 years in the Army, including time at Fort Hood, says the family is in disbelief. They were told he died by suicide mm -hmm. off post. I remember that. Was it the sexual harassment? Was it the... the... That's right. They, they said he committed suicide. I believe um, Elder was who um, had appeared to have hung himself, but it was not a suicide. The open secret on Fort Hood is that he spoke up about Vanessa Guillen, um, and yeah, it, they they had no dirt on him. They couldn't find any dirt on him. They had to kill him. The bullying was it the the, the hazing in May? Fernandez reported someone grabbed his rear end. The army moved him to a different unit, but said they also noticed behavioral changes. Fernandez was admitted to the hospital in early August and was last. So they just say he was admitted into the hospital. They didn't say he sought out treatment. He was admitted into the hospital. That leaves a whole gaping area of what happened in between that the army should be able to speak to very cogently and very openly. Yeah, my guess and I'm going to do some more digging, I'm getting command-directed eval vibes. Yep, an involuntary admission. That's what I'm getting. ...on the 17th, the day he was released. A week later, he was found dead. We were truly help hoping for a different result in reuniting Sergeant Fernandez with his family. No, they weren't. But just two days later... No, this was another assassination. It was a death sentence. They were in on it. Those guys were in on it. They were read into it. They facilitated it. They might not have done the dirty work, but they held those pockets wide open. The Army announced the case was closed, saying the person accused of the sexual assault passed a polygraph and there were no other witnesses. They told us that it was in... Um, yeah, a polygraph? It's not even forensically approved to be, I mean, I'm not saying I agree with that, but there have been people who have failed polygraphs who were telling the truth or proven to be innocent rather in the court of law. And there are people who've been able to lie and appear to have been telling the truth during polygraphs. They, oh my God, they let this person walk on a goddamn polygraph? Are you kidding me? and it would be a timely investigation. Fernandez is now the 10th soldier stationed at Fort Hood, found dead since March, including Houston soldier Vanessa Guillen. And in this case, and in so many other cases, we're feeling like these soldiers are being let down. Today, yes. Fernandez's body was flown back home to Brockton. And if it's any consolation for um, uh, my fellow brothers and sisters in arms in the Army, your sister's service is notice, and we are there for you. We know we know what's going on. We support you guys, and we hope for your safety and your welfare. We really, really do. Massachusetts, his family wants an independent autopsy. Meantime, at Fort Hood, a civilian committee has arrived to investigate the claims of sexual harassment these cases have brought to light. Mia? So many questions, Grace. Thank you. It's it's sad. Um, the army absolutely tolerates and condones and relies on this culture to continue on with whatever their endeavors may be. Now, 
I'm not, I'm not saying that the senior leadership and the senior ranking military officials at Fort Hood are necessarily people who go out and sexually assault people. They might just benefit financially from it or professionally from it. Um, a lot of times that tends to be more the case. Um, and so anyway, yeah. Um, it's, it's really sad that after all these murders, the, that the first phone call wasn't to the FBI. There's no reason at this point. The army has proven, the army has proven time and again that they cannot conduct an impartial investigation. They can't. They're not capable of it. No self-policing entity is. Um... I mean, even, even a non-self-policing entity isn't capable of a fully, unanimously impartial investigation. At the end of the day, we all have biases too. So, um, yeah, it's, just, it's sad. Uh, anyway, um, I'm going to get going. I got some errands to run. going to hit my bull a couple more times. Oh my god, this is delightful. Anyway, um, everybody not watching this from home, I hope y'all have a good day and stay warm. And hopefully you have warm weather where you're at because uh, I cannot with the cold. But at least it's all, it's 40 degrees. Okay, I'm not going to complain. It's 40 degrees. It could be a lot fucking worse. All right, bye-bye.